Hey guys, what's up? It's Drew here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a bunch of different 140 and 150 RPM hand cannons and finding out which one is the best one. We'll be taking a look at three main categories, I think the biggest, most contributing categories, which is going to be the trait perks available on each weapon, the range potential of each weapon, and the stability potential of each weapon. We are only taking a look at those categories in the interest of time, so it's not too long of a breakdown or comparison, and then we're also comparing just the main categories that mean the most or have the most influence on a weapon's performance. So we'll be comparing the new DFA, the Midnight Coup, Old Fashioned, Dire Promise, Jack Queen King, and Better Devils. I think these are the main best hand cannons in the game personally, and some of the most popular, so that's why we're going to be taking a look at these ones specifically. Also, just to clarify, each weapon's stats and little gameplay samples show its best performance in the current category. As much as on most of these hand cannons, there's no way of getting maximum range and stability at the same time, we're looking at each hand cannon on a per category basis with their most potential in each. So now let's get into our comparison. The first thing we're going to be taking a look at is trait perks. So we're going to start with the DFA. And we're going to kind of compare this to the Midnight Coup. This is a comparison that a lot of people have wanted to see because they're both Rampage hand cannons, so which one is better? Now, Midnight Coup, it's important to mention that it gets two trait perks. It's something unique with the raid weapons. It gets Rampage and Outlaw, which actually pairs really, really nicely. If you don't know already, what Rampage does is it grants a 10% damage bonus after each kill, but it caps at three stacks. Each stack, though, lasts for three and a half seconds. So we're going to take a look at one Rampage stack and two Rampage stacks for each weapon. I don't think there's any big difference with three Rampage stacks. You're pretty much guaranteed that the weapon is going to be incredibly lethal if you get that to happen, and it's rather unlikely to get to the point that you're going to have three Rampage stacks on a regular basis. So there are many combinations of damage that you can achieve using Rampage on a weapon or even the regular damage combined with Rampage and what kind of resilience levels that'll kill. But I tried to look at the main outcomes that seemed like you'd be encountering the most based on the resilience level or the best case scenario for it. So to start with the Midnight Coup with Rampage times one, if you hit three shots of Rampage, you can kill an enemy in three crits if they have seven resilience or lower or one crit three body at four resilience. If not, and you hit two shots, then you can hit three crits again against three resilience for a kill, or just one crit three body against two resilience. If you only get to hit one shot, then you're not going to get much effectiveness, as you can still three crit, and even one crit three body, but only on zero resilience guardians. With the DFA on Rampage times one, you can actually three crit any resilience if you were to hit three shots of Rampage on a target, or at least one crit three body, any resilience. You can even just four body shot a guardian with three resilience. If you hit only two shots of Rampage, you still have the opportunity to get a three crit kill against four resilience, which is still somewhere around the average resilience, or you can one crit three body any resilience still. With just one shot though, you can three crit one resilience, which is gonna be a lot less likely, but of course you can still one crit three body any resilience. Going back to the Midnight Coup for Rampage times two, hitting three shots allows you to three crit any resilience or even two crit one body at three resilience, which is on the lower end. Hitting two shots of Rampage allows you to three crit still any resilience, but one crit three body up until nine resilience. One shot though will allow you to three crit against still, but only against low resilience at three resilience and one crit three body at three resilience as well. With the DFA at rampage times two, hitting three shots of rampage lets you three crit all resilience of course, or even two crit one body nine resilience, which is very likely nine resilience is just one under 10. So if they're not running 10, you can get a two crit one body kill on them, which is really great. Hitting two shots though, you can still three crit of course all resilience, but you can still two crit one body, two resilience again on the lower end, so not as likely. With one shot, you can three crit four resilience, which is still the average, which is great, or just one crit three body, any resilience for that consistency. So which of these weapons are truly better with Rampage? In my opinion, DFA just has a lot more potential for Rampage. Even on the low end, even with Rampage times one, it can still have the opportunity to three crit any resilience, or even just with two shots of it, for resilience, which is the average, which is or has been the go-to for a very long time. What's great about it too at the end of the day is that it can always one crit three body, 
which makes the weapon just that much more consistent. You hit your head and you can just spam out for the body shots and get the kill. I do think Midnight Coup does have some potential with Rampage, but for the most part, I think it's rather impractical. A lot of the requirements on the weapon, at least for one Rampage stack, require some pretty low resilience levels, other than if you hit the three crit on a seven resilience, which is pretty good. But on the opposite end, if you only hit one shot with one Rampage stack and they're not running zero resilience, you're gonna see probably little to no effect of Rampage, and Zero Resilience is not common at all. Now, in favor of the Midnight Coup, it does have Outlaw, so a super fast reload speed and a faster rate of fire, only by slightly, so you can actually have more potential to get more shots of Rampage off within the 3.5 second window. In my opinion though, the DFA being able to handle any resilience just with one Rampage stack and have tons of potential just in that alone is just more of an advantage to me than the potential of being able to hit maybe one more shot. And remember that DFA does have drop mag as much as I don't recommend it. If you do want it, you can use it. It's totally usable and it does decrease that reload speed and becomes quite competitive with the outlaw as well. So in my opinion, the DFA's Rampage is more influential and on average more impactful than the Midnight Coups Rampage. However, we still have a lot of perks to go to. The next one is the Old Fashioned's Kill Clip. Now this gets a 33% damage increase upon reload after getting a kill and that lasts for 5 seconds so it's actually lasts longer than Rampage and it's actually a little bit more controllable than Rampage because you get like a little split second to delay your reload and choose when you want to reload to control over when you activate it. Which is pretty crazy when you think that this is essentially a Rampage times 3 stack that only takes one kill and you have more control over it. Now there's merits to both because if you're in engagement after engagement after engagement then you know Rampage might have a little more usage, but I feel like that scenario in PvP is very unlikely. The Old Fashioned's Kill Clip allows it to one crit, two body kill, and otherwise consistently three tap with at least one Kill Clip critical hit, which is pretty insane. Next we have Dire Promise and Triple Tap. Now Triple Tap moves one shot from the reserves to the magazine after hitting three precision hits, and this allows for that continuous use without having to reload in engagement. So you can just keep unloading on targets, especially if they don't see you and you're just getting good shots on them and this is most effective in those aggressive or offensive engagements and plays because it allows you to just keep shooting keep being aggressive maintain your aggression and not have to reload or back off at any point if you're rolling through people we also have jack queen king's pulse monitor now this is very similar it replenishes a significant portion of the mag after getting critically wounded or like the red health area and it allows for continuous use and engagements essentially so it's more useful though in defensive encounters i think where you kill an enemy you get wounded and as a result you get an auto reload all ready for the next engagement. Lastly, we have the Better Devil's Explosive Rounds, and this essentially allows the weapon to retain 23 damage from every shot, and this allows for better damage sustenance and minimum damage output at range, especially those farther ranges. Some might say that's not the main reason to use it, because a big thing of what Explosive Rounds does is it disorients opposing players with flashes on their screen when they're shot, and induces a pretty drastic amount of flinch to throw an opponent's accuracy off. So this helps you get more consistency out of gunfights because you're going to be really screwing up the opponent. Some also say that the hitbox appeared to feel more forgiving, but there's no real evidence of this. So if I had to rank the weapons based on their trait perks and how it allows them to perform, I would say Old Fashioned gets number one with Kill Clip. Number two, I'd say is a tie between DFA's Rampage and Better Devil's Explosive Rounds. And then number three would be Midnight Coup and Rampage. I think Old Fashioned hands down gets number one in this area. It just allows an individual player to just be so lethal and have so explosive plays with that three tap and there's little to no cost to getting just one kill on a reload is not hard to do and again in the hands of a great player it's going to be just incredibly dangerous second place dfa and better devils i'd say dfa because the rampage is just so effective it's more influential than the midnight coup which is why midnight coup is in third rampage on the 140 rpm dfa just provides so much more consistency to it and i put better devils as a tie with that because i think that same amount of consistency you kind of gain off of the better devils being able to sustain a massive amount of damage at range while ruining another player's consistency is really really good lastly of course midnight coup is still no joke the combo of rampage and outlaw is just so good it's just i wasn't too impressed with the potential of rampage on midnight coup but don't get me wrong it still can provide some great consistency probably in the hands of a great player which is why it's on the list moving on now to our next category of range 
Starting with the Midnight Coup, the Midnight Coup has a 43 range stat, but starts to see damage drop off at 27 meters, and in fact it changes to a 5 shot kill at 34 meters. Similar case for Dire Promise, it has a slightly higher 48 range, which means it's going to be able to maintain its optimal damage up until 28 meters, then see damage drop off, and it gets a time to kill change at the same place as Midnight Coup, which is 34 meters. Jack Queen King, on the other hand, has 54 range and lasts for 31 meters without any damage drop off. Its time to kill change, however, starts at 37 meters. Now, ricochet rounds is something important to mention on the Jack Queen King, which helps it out with range a ton because that's essentially range finder in Destiny 2. It grants a 9% range increase and it maintains at least 9 more damage than every other hand cannon at ranges up to 43 meters, other than the Better Devils. Speaking of Better Devils, it's got 55 range and gets optimal damage up till 30 meters. It sees a time to kill change at 36 meters, but thanks to explosive rounds and that minimum damage sustenance, it maintains better damage for crit and body ratios and damage output at range. The old fashioned has 58 range, which is pretty high and maintains optimal damage up until 30 meters, but gets a time to kill change at 35 meters. Lastly, the DFA has a great 68 range, lasting up until about 32 meters with optimal damage and getting a time to kill change at between 36 to 38 meters meters depending on the barrel option and opening shot per. So in terms of range, the number one goes to Jack Queen King, and this is because it actually maintains better damage output than the better devils even, only until it becomes even at 42 meters. So Jack Queen King keeps the most damage at range, and again, that's because of ricochet rounds, the new range finder, it's absolutely crazy. Second place, of course, goes to better devils, having a great range stat with explosive rounds along with it. And then third place goes to the DFA for having just a great core range stat. Moving on now to our final category, we're going to take a look at stability. And starting with the Midnight Coup, it's got 52 stability, 80 recoil direction. Its recoil direction goes up and to the right. Next is Dire Promise, which has 72 stability, which is really high, and an 84 recoil direction with entirely vertical recoil. Jack Queen King has a 55 stability with 100, so a nearly perfect recoil direction, which is entirely vertical. Better Devils has 61 stability and 88 recoil direction, and its recoil direction goes up and to the left. Old Fashion has 59 stability with 95 recoil direction, and its recoil pattern is vertical but a little bit scattered. Lastly is the DFA, and I have to mention that I was using Arrowhead Break on it, so this isn't the best stability option, but it's the most consistent combination of stability and recoil direction, simply because we're not using any kinetic counterbalance mods on any of these weapons. So the DFA has 59 stability and 88 recoil direction, and the recoil is pretty entirely vertical. So the best of these hand cannons based on the recoil direction, the distance between each shot or how tight they were, aka the stability, and how easy it was to see the target while shooting the weapon are the Dire Promise in the number one spot. So this had 11 shots packed into the DFA's nine. So crazy stable shots, not a lot of distance between each shot. It had great visibility, wasn't a distracting model at all. You can clearly see your target when you're using it and it's got consistent recoil, which is pretty much entirely vertical. The number two spot goes to the DFA because it has debatably the most consistent recoil pattern of all these weapons. It's got pretty tight distance between shots and more potential stability if you use polygonal rifling. Number three goes to the Jack Queen King. This thing has incredibly consistent recoil patterns. That 100 stat does not at all lie. It's got considerable distance between each shot though, but the consistency kind of makes up for that. But the big thing about it is that the model of the weapon kind of makes it hard to see your target when you're firing at the max rate of fire. So that's what I mean by that kind of visibility of when you're shooting. And that's why it gets a number three spot. So overall, in my opinion, I think the DFA is the best hand cannon in the game. It might not be the very best in every category, but it has a presence, it has a potential, and a good performance in every one of these categories. And if you watch my review of the weapon, this is what I meant by a weapon that performs well or good in every category can actually be pretty great. I mean, this isn't to say though that there's no reason to be using another hand cannon. There's so many reasons to be using something like old fashioned. I think that weapon 
gives or offers some of the most potential in the hands of a skilled player solely for the fact that it has kill clip and good enough stats in every other category. A great player with good accuracy can slay out with the old fashioned. Or if you're looking for the best of the best laser beam stability, then there's dire promise, or perhaps just massive amounts of range but consistent recoil. Well, you got the Jack Queen King. There's a lot of reasons to be using different weapons, but I think overall, the best of all of them, in my opinion, is the DFA. Another thing interesting about the DFA is a long time ago, I made a comparison between the recoil in D1 versus D2 and versus D2 with mouse and keyboard on PC, and it seemed like the recoil on hand cannons in D2 is far more drastic than it was in D1. But the DFA is actually the most similar I have seen in the entire game to a palindrome perhaps in Destiny 1. And you can look at the footage right here to compare. So that's my analysis, that's my thoughts, my breakdown. So let me know what you think is the best hand cannon for you, what your opinion is, what you have to take away from the video. Tell me in the comments down below. Before we go though, we do have the winner of the emblem giveaway for the Destiny logo emblem and the winner is Frame Breeze. So congratulations and thanks for everyone that entered and followed on Twitch. I appreciate it tremendously and there'll be more emblem giveaways in the near future. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the comparison. I hope this was useful in some way. As always, it's Madrid here today and I'll catch you guys later.